<clears throat> okay, welcome back everyone. So here come to our last segment uh, of our API Days event. We are in the day two last segment. So uh, we are uh, having the segment talking about the fi uh, financial services and APIs. So um, the first uh, talk here is uh, we are glad to have um, IBM uh, uh, Lake uh, so he is the uh, architect at IBM, and then he will be talking about the next stage of open API at uh, banking industry. Okay, Lucky, how are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, your voice is good. So let's see your slide. Yeah, I can see your slide as well. So I pass the time to you. So thanks. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, maybe for those who are not in the Hong Kong or the Asia time zone, good day. Uh, thank you for joining this session. My name is Nikki. I'm one of the IT architects uh, from IBM Global Business Services at Hong Kong. Today, I'm going to talk about the next stage for open API at banking industry, but it is more specifically for the Hong Kong uh, under the push from the Open API Initiative of the uh, HKMA, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. So let's start. Basically, we can look into the usage of Open API from three angles. First, uh, of course, uh, the bank as the API provider to stand up the API services for the third party service provider, TXP, to let them to use it. It is the key focus as part of the open, open banking journey for the banks to open up their service through the TSP to have some new customers to be on board and using their banking services. It is more for the retail case. Actually, the, uh, the HKMA uh, they, they issued the uh, Open API framework in uh, 2018 uh, for the banks to establish their own API platform. It is also from this angle. Maybe it is because traditionally the banks are more trustworthy, more regulated, and uh, the TSP are usually the new business or some, some of them are, 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 are newly established startups. And so the bank as the, uh, the resources owner to provide the API service will be making more sense. So the specification from, uh, from HKMA uh, for phase three, they uh, try to persuade the account aggregator as the use case uh, to, for the bank to, to uh, uh, let the TSP to, to make use of that. Okay, the second angle is the bank as the API consumer. So the bank can also make use of uh, the APIs from other, uh, other business. There are now more and more large corporations, uh, technology giants. They do have a huge customer base. And therefore, the banks uh, also want to uh, make partners with them to provide some joint services to create some more new revenues uh, for themselves or for the partner. Then API as the channels to integrate will be more essential, more necessary when the banks uh, agree to trust the external partner, in particular for the real-time transactions. Actually, for Hong Kong case, some of the virtual banks actually are better by the uh, industry leader, technology giants, they actually, as a separate entity, separate organization, they do make use of the open API in between such that the, the business value across these two uh, organizations can be uh, having some synergy and collaborate uh, uh, in a good shape together. So uh, I take a more typical example will be uh, the insurance industry. Uh, the bank assurance will, will be a typical case uh, here for uh, bank as the API consumer. The insurance companies can provide some uh, APIs for their 
product catalogs, and then let the banks to call it in real time to provide to the customer or together with uh, their uh, banking service in order to make an attractive offer. It will gradually become a trend for, for banks to be the, the consumer part. And then for the third one, the uh, interbank connections. We know, uh, for instance, it is uh, mostly riding on SWIFT uh, to provide a uh, service as a hub or as the global standards. SWIFT also try to evolve themselves to provide API-based technology, even though uh, uh, it is not allowing the banks to do direct uh, open API call to another bank because they are the hub. However, nowadays, if the uh, local regulatory bodies try to encourage the local banks to do the partnership locally. There may be some new use case. We are looking forward to this. So eventually, the target is to build up an API ecosystem such that more collaborations across uh, banking and other industry will, uh, will occur to support new business use case which are, uh, we need to ensure that the new use case will be beneficial to the customers, no matter whether it is from the retail business, uh, food and beverage, insurance, property developers, or even games. As long as the uh, use case will be beneficial to the customer or making convenience to, to them, the customers are more willing to pay and then it will drive new business across the, the, uh, all the participants in the ecosystem to win. Okay, coming back to the first angle, having the bank as the API provider. Uh, the HKMA has long been pushing the open API initiative since 2018. And now the uh, phase three implementation timeline is uh, announced a, a few months ago, uh, where in which uh, transaction-based consent management should be implemented to support the new service. It defines a set of uh, customer consent endpoint, the consent ID to support the account availability, account status, account balance, account transaction functions. So we can interpret them as the support to the account aggregator use case. Okay, we try to illustrate the use case right here with an example. So the bank customers can go through this TSP applications to list their credit and debit transactions. And, and they, these transactions are coming from their consent the accounts. And then uh, the, that means the spendings or incomes or loans will be listed right there. It may help the customers to do some collective actions or reminder to, to their repayments. And then eventually it will give the opportunity for the TSP and the bank to some uh, to check out some new banking services or uh, that means uh, loans or time deposit or any others that uh, the two party or two partner can, can think of to, to offer to the end customers. So here we mentioned that uh, the, the key point is the customer consent. Why the uh, transaction-based customer consent is that important? It is because nowadays the API mechanism actually enable us to get the customers to involve rather than the, uh, like the traditional business to business system integration, which barely allow the data exchange. Um, the end customers can uh, make use of their own digital device to take part in and then to control their own transactions. The authentications uh, right here in this case will go through uh, directly to the bank and they don't need to worry about whether they expose their uh, banking credentials to the third party. The consent also being given directly to the bank instead of leaving the 
TSP to freely uh, draw unnecessary information, uh, overriding the end customer's original expectation, their original intent. Okay, you may say that it can be achieved by OAuth mechanism. So, so actually it is yes or no. Um, we would like to say that uh, the OAuth specifications, it is supporting the API authorizations. Uh, so it means uh, in the technical sense, once the API is authorized per particular scope, carrying a valid SS token, then it can be performed, it can be executed. However, it is not enough. Uh, the customer consent management actually need to su support the, the solution from the business level to hand handle some business level manipulations. Say for example, life cycle, the, uh, uh, the consent as a business entity, it has to stay clearly uh, whether it is currently being pending, uh, authorized, we work or rejected. It is not uh, purely supported or it is not coming with the OAuth uh, spe specification. So all consent records need to be traceable or auditable such that uh, any update to the, the uh, customer consent has to be checked. By when or by when, by where the, the customers do an update of a consent. The full provenance of the records has to be uh, uh, keep track. And uh, we make sure that uh, the, uh, when the uh, business transaction is being invoked, the consent is there in place. So uh, the third one, consistency chat. We can also base on the customer consent to do the business logic validation to confirm the exact scope that they are authorizing, say by individual account or by certain period of time or by the transaction amount, let's say, uh, it can be controlled. While uh, at the OAuth, uh, we, uh, the API will just uh, uh, being authorized and being posted. So last but not least, the consent entity has to be made uh, flexible, extensible, uh, such that it can handle some new future cases and uh, having some new future uh, consent type uh, for that kind of new uh, use cases. The O of SS token does not really represent the business uh, meaning in, in that sense. So uh, coming to the IBM solution that we have, by leveraging our strength uh, in the four area, we do have the API and cloud platform product uh, together with Red Hat, and we do have the experience of the HKMA open API phase one and two implementation locally here, and the Google team uh, behind actually did the EU PSD2 implementation, such that we do have some reference architecture to support us to build the solution. And we have uh, built some uh, accelerator yeah, behind the scene, uh, the microservices uh, framework, the cookbook for API Connect, the API management platform, the API development. They are also applicable for us to, to uh, put into the solution. And we, we, of course, also have a lot of uh, local experience uh, uh, doing the API first uh, microservice and cloud implementation at uh, some banks and large uh, enterprise. These experiences are also counted. So with all this, we have already built up a reference architecture that will work with the bank's platform to stand up the customer management consent service uh, uh, to meet the HKMA phase three requirements. We incorporated the IBM API Connect as the all-in-one API management platform 
with the developer portal service and API governance capability to do the frontier API uh, transaction handling. The uh, API uh, uh, the API uh, gateway actually uh, use, is using the data power technology, which will take care of the security control and integration. We also land the uh, solutions on the Red Hat OpenShift, supporting the microservices architecture. And we also leverage the high availability con uh, container platform capability to enhance the operations. So, for the pre-built component right here in blue, of course, we included the uh, consensus management service, which we have uh, briefly discussed how the business consensus should be managed and what it should support. Of course, we will do it in our solution right here. And then the open API provider service. Actually, these are the channel microservices which will talk with the business tier uh, services of the bank, if it is readily available, or and or in turn, uh, call up the bank's uh, core system of records uh, to return the, the account information, the balance, uh, the transactions. Um, quite depends on the individual uh, bank's uh, current technology state or environment. They may make use of the traditional ESB, or may, maybe they, they are transforming to the new way Agile integration you, using, excuse me, using the API-led model, uh, or even they are in the hybrid mode. We definitely, the solution need to support all those. So in order to achieve the client authentication, that means uh, the OAuth of Kogwan flow, we build a dedicated uh, backend component to interact with our OAuth provider and also uh, integrate with the consensus management uh, service, such that it will be helping the solution to provide a, a one, uh, one single microservice for the uh, uh, front end web applications to do the login. That front end application doing the, the login boss or the uh, facilitating the two-factor authentications uh, uh, through the redirect authentications uh, uh, through the OAuth flow, will definitely have to be built in according to the bank's individual e-banking standard, having their uh, crypto uh, facility behind the HSM to uh, handle the customer uh, credential in a secret way, following their own current practice, uh, likewise to the uh, e-banking systems. So, following also the uh, the HKMA user scenarios, we do have some other utility-based channel services, uh, uh, the TSP notification event and uh, the customer notification service, such that it will be completely uh, fulfilling uh, all the functional requirements per the uh, phase three. So we hope this uh, weapons architecture will be able to help the band to move on to the next stage uh, doing the phase B implementation smoothly and also uh, form part of the API ecosystem for the more use case facilitations. So, and of course, uh, there are a lot more, uh, a lot more things to consider when we come to the actual design and the operations of the solution. Say, for example, in the functional way, uh, uh, we mentioned about the OAuth and the uh, consensus entity. It seems like right now a two-tier uh, authorization. Um, so how are we going to do the correlations in between the OAuth access token and the consensus entity? Uh, it will be really a, a, a question or really uh, a technical implementation that we have to meet. And it will help to avoid the TSP to reach you the, the access token uh, and then try to make use of some compromised uh, uh, access token 
to make the call and cause any data leak case to the customer. It has to be avoided. And another example will be uh, uh, for, the, for the scenario that we need to support uh, is the request consents or request tokens uh, uh, use case. The access tokens can uh, keep on changing uh, during the expiry time. And uh, the consents entity actually will last for uh, a, a longer while, depends on the, the use case that we have. And then how can we ensure the continuously pairing between the access token and the consents entity? It has to be built up. And the other functional uh, 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 features that we have to consider is the tokenizations. Whether or not we need to do some translation of a certain band specific uh, sensitive information uh, before we pass it on to the TSP, it has to be managed just likewise to the PI, PCI DSS uh, specification. Okay, the other op operational uh, consideration will be that uh, when, when we try to say, uh, let the TSP to make use of the open API, we offer them the API key, the kind ID, kind sequence. When we do the rotation of these, and then how can we ensure the solution, uh, the tie up with the access token, the, uh, the, and then correspondingly what we mentioned about the consensus entity, it will continuously to, to be able to be weighted. Uh, uh, even though the TSP rotate the kind ID. And there are some internal key rotations that we have to ensure in this solution. And of course, uh, the, the audit and locking and monitoring requirement, we, we actually, for this total solution, we have to take care of all of this. Without seriously think through all this scenario, the, the validation uh, will, uh, will easily be broken and then the, the use case uh, up to the, the end business customers will, will not work. And right here, it seems like uh, the solution is more crippled with the API management platform or the uh, OAuth provider service. Definitely it is, yes. That's why it, when we try to say make up this solution, we cannot just uh, uh, on one side do the uh, product solution or on the other side uh, to say uh, do the uh, system integration or application development behind the scene. It actually need to work out to, together in order the whole things will be uh, cooperate, operate uh, properly to, 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 uh, together. So other operational concerns are like uh, scalability and performance. Uh, we are opening up the, the APIs to the, to the third party or to the end customers. And then uh, how are we going to adjust the first loading of the API uh, when our business or when our use case are trying to grow in transaction amount? And then right here, of course, we try to make use of the, the cloud platform microservice architecture to, to ensure the uh, scalability. So we have to, uh, when we go down to the, the actual uh, design, detail design of the solution, we have to cater that. So all together, it tells you how capable the solution has to be in order that uh, in real life, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the use case uh, can be used uh, for, by the customer over the market. And let's see how it will go uh, under the phase B implementation of the uh, HKMA at the banks. And uh, we hope the solution will be able to say, continue to grow to support other, uh, other use case in the ecosystem. So that's all for me. And okay.
Patrick? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nikki, for sharing, and then uh, your focus on the phase three. So um, uh, we are one out, running out of time, although we got some question, and uh, I think uh, you mentioned a lot of on on the consent. So there's quite some people who want to understand further. But uh, I would suggest our audience can also reach out uh, Nikki and IBM offline, and then see how they can help, uh, and then their thoughts on the consent management, especially for the um, Hong Kong MA phase three. So uh, okay. once again, thanks, Nikki, for your sharing. So I'll uh, see you soon, and then uh, thanks for support. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks, Nikki.